I, today is a happy day because you get to learn what E equals MC squared really means. We see that all the time and people will spit it out. Einstein came up with it. Something with relativity. Well, you get to learn what it is today. Pretty exciting. Um, this is called mass defect that we're going to talk about. Let's first jump into this uh, vocabulary word, the definition of nuclear binding energy. This is the energy required to separate a nucleus into its respective protons and neutrons, okay? So I've given an example. We're going to do really easy. This is a deuterium. Um, so we've got hydrogen, one proton, and there's one neutron in this. So if you break it apart, simplest thing that we could do, um, our simplest example, we've got one proton and one neutron. Now, check this out. The energy to break that apart, that would be the nuclear binding energy. The energy to break that apart is huge. 2.15 times 10 to the 8 kilojoules per mole. So you can see how this uh, nuclear binding energy is so much greater than energy when we're doing traditional chemistry of just moving electrons, sharing, um, uh, donating positive negative charges. Uh, this nuclear binding energy, huge amount of energy. Why nuclear energy has so much energy, both fusion and fission for that matter. Um, so that's gonna be 200 million kilojoules. Wow, <laughs> huge amount of energy just to break apart one proton and one neutron. Um, well, a mole of those, to break apart a mole of deuterium, huge amount of energy. Um, now, from experimental observation, a scientist discovered this mass defect, and it was Einstein that explained what it was. So here's the mass defect, a defect from experimental ob observation. The mass of the nucleus, so I'm looking right here at that deuterium, is always less than the sum of the masses of its protons and neutrons. So if I was to do an inequality for masses, the mass of the deuterium is going to be less than the mass of the proton plus the neutron. Now, I know this is tweaking your brain. You're saying, wait, 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 what about conservation of mass? The mass that you begin with on reactants always has to equal the mass that you end with on the product side. Okay, that's going to be yes in traditional chemistry. Give me just a second, give me a little bit of grace, and I'll explain this, what's happening. Um, so I want to give you the example of the deuterium. Uh, so here's the mass in grams if we had one mole of deuterium. It's 2.01410. We use mass spec, that's what I did when I was an organic chemist. We have high precision that we know the mass of a mole of deuterium. Now, the mass of a proton, 1.007825, the mass of a neutron, 1.008665. Now, if we do the change in mass, so the mass of the product is going to be the mass of the individual proton and neutron minus the mass of those put together as an um, isotope, this deuterium, the difference is 0 0.00239 grams per mole. This right here, the deuterium, weighs 0 0.00239 grams less than the mass of the proton plus the neutron. So this is what Einstein discovered. He came up with E equals mc squared. And really what this tells us is that mass and energy are different manifestations of the same quantity. So if you will, I'm gonna take a little bit of liberty to help you make this make sense. Um, it's really at the nuclear level that there is a conservation between the combination of mass and energy. It's mass and energy that will always be conserved. Total mass energy on reactants will be total mass energy on the product side. So at nuclear energy, there's still conservation, but we have to marry together the mass and the energy. Now, kind of fun, you're going to enjoy this bringing it full circle. Um, let's go ahead and plug in the change right here. The change of our mass, let's plug that into E equals mc squared. Now notice what I did here, I did a delta. When we say energy equals mass times speed of light squared, it's actually the change of mass, it's the mass defect, okay? So the change of mass, our change of mass right here, 0 0.00239 kilograms or grams per mole, just converted that to kilograms per mole. So it's 2.39 times 10 to the minus six. Uh, kilograms per mole, and I did that because I want to get it to energy. Remember, a joule energy is kilogram times meter squared divided by second squared. So we had to have this in kilograms um, times speed of light, 2.998 times 10 to the 8 meters per second squared. So you multiply the change in mass times speed of light squared, oh, 
and you get 2.15 times 10 to the 8 kilojoules per mole. Oh my goodness, 2.15 times 10 to the 8 kilojoules per mole. That's the energy that's holding together that proton and neutron in the deuterium. Is that exciting? Did it like give you cold chills maybe? I think it's awesome. <laughs> All right, so there's the mass defect. Your big takeaways. The mass of the isotope will always be less than the sum of the masses of the total protons and neutrons. Um, and you can think about it as a conservation between total energy and mass reactants compared to products. Last huge takeaway, the nuclear binding energy is giant. The energy that holds together neutrons and protons inside of the nucleus, power of the stars, huge amount of energy. Enjoy nuclear chemistry, so much fun. Have a good day, thanks.